Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Volcano Block. For today, I want to set up a bit more automation with all of our farms that we had. I want to reset those up. I want to set up a sugar game farm, maybe a cactus farm if we can, because I think we need to go very much vanilla for those. We don't really have any other choice because the breaker is just going to break all of the things, I think. But we might play around with uh, with with the breaker that's behind me for sugar cane cactus. Maybe it'll work. We'll see. I set up this magical contraption and if we want to go bigger in scale, it's just going to take much more and more ceramic, but I think it's going to be fine for this uh, for this amount that we need of energy and dust, basically. So what I have here is an energy and arrow heater and then automatic crystal cutters that are stacked one on top of another and they require 100 uh, input temperature and they all get pretty much the top one gets 200 something temperature. Even though it says on the crystal cutter that it only puts out 80% of its temperature upwards. So I don't know how it actually uh, scales up or whatever or scales down. I don't really know. Uh, but on the backs, I have dispersing extractors, which are just going to extract directly downwards. And then the bottom most one has a linear extractor, which is going to push the energy and crystals into the rotary grinder, which has a magmatic arrow heater with a lava block underneath. And that guy is going to then get extracted out of here, put into this nether chest, which is going to act as a buffer once the hoppers fills up, fill up, if those ever fill up. Uh, and those go back into the energy and arrow heater. And how I want to turn this on is essentially what I actually wanted, but I don't think it's realistic, is to have this fully autonomous. So you could have this guy running or not running, basically, uh, every time... Uh, you need to uh, cut crystals and I don't know if we can detect these guys with a comparator. I think I've already tried, but I'm not really sure. If we place a comparator here, uh, we can't really detect anything. So what essentially I would have to do is have an observer there. And I think an observer can detect the change in, in it, at least. I think it should be able to because it's a block change. And I don't think we have any sort of like scanner or anything that I could detect the full level of growth. No, we have integrated dynamics. I'm, I'm, we have better than scanners. Uh, so what we could do possibly, I have to figure out integrated dynamics a little bit more, but we can put a reader on each one of them and say that if it reads the maximum growth tier, then turn off this redstone torch for a second, or at least let's say power this piston once, which is going to toss one energy and dust in here through this hopper. And that is going to trigger this entire contraption to start cutting the crystals. So that's a possibility. I don't know if I have enough mineral for that, but I think I want to possibly progress through embers a little bit more just so we can get to the calculator mod so we can get to RF so we can uh, actually get uh, automatic uh, crystallized mineral chunks through the through the squeezer, uh, which I think is going to be much, much, much much helpful. That's not how you say that. Much more helpful or whatever. Okay, so Promise of Tenacity 3. We needed uh, the Bowl of Promises Strength 3. That is 5,000 blood with Filled Bowl of Empty Promises. So let's get that going. I have gathered the 160,000 millibuckets of blood that we need in between episodes. And uh, basically I used the spiked plate right on top of here, or I just manually killed the skeletons. Uh, and right now I added uh, more of these, uh, if we look in here, uh, ba, 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 I can reach it. There we go. I added 16 blood crystals. So, so we, have a t uh, we had, I think six or seven last episode. So those now increase the quantity and they spawn outside of this radius right now. So I think we need to uh, increase the summoner room. And I don't know if I just want to go off the edge or just uh, increase it like all the way up to that edge. And that means that we have to move everything, which is kind of annoying, but you know, it's okay. I mean, we can remove the blood crystals, which uh, uh, should be able, we should be able to do that by just doing a thing like that. And then we can just right click the essence back. Let's do half the blood crystals, the murky orbs, and the I made another two oscillating gears. Uh, this is uh, a reset up of the Enderman thing so I can slay them manually because they didn't want to spawn in here in the middle. Uh, also, if you're wondering how I did this, uh, this is chiseling bits. I just made a hole and so I can stand on it, reach the lever uh, and do everything that I need. Uh, and we'll see if with the eight orbs, they still spawn outside. Uh, you're kind of halfway done, so you're going to need a moment. 
But I did make with the Zora Altar, or actually with Zora Steel, I made a Zora Steel Sword and a Zora Steel Hand Bow. And those are really cool because you toss them in. And I need to grab a few Zora leaves here. Uh, you toss them in like so. And if you go for the bottom one, you don't know what you're gonna get. But it costs low levels. But example, for example, if you want to have Fire Aspect 3, we can uh, use up 22 levels to get that directly. Or we can get Sweeping Edge 7? 6? 6? For 17 levels. But basically, uh, essentially, at some point, it's just gonna max out anyway. So why not just use this and get like 2 levels of something? So we got Looting 2. Uh, we got, I think, Smite 4 as well. Uh, so that is really neat. And on the handbow, we have Infinity, Power 4, Poison Tip, and Flame. And this guy is basically with Infinity. I can just uh, do that. And it's it looks like it's kind of like a, almost a one-shot. If not, they die right after, which is really cool. And with this guy, I can just sweep and edge them with uh, like two shots or so. Uh, and I've just been tossing things in here. I don't know why I'm not getting Skeleton Skulls, even though I'm killing them manually with this sword. Uh, but... It is what it is, so I'm, I'm gonna take what I get. It's an infinite bow and a really cool sword that doesn't break, so that's... Uh, I'm gonna take it, basically. Uh, so essentially, at some point, I can just max this out when I get more and more XP. Uh, for the moment, we're gonna add this guy to here, so we can farm up more blood, uh, just automatically. Uh, and I've been using this guy to repair stuff. Uh, for example, I switched off of the Tetra stuff, for at least for right now, because the Soul Steel pickaxe and the axe are really nice. Uh, and eventually I can just add a 30 level enchantment on it. Oh, Tombstone Soulbound. That's neat. Alright, uh, this is almost done, so I'm just gonna wait for that to complete. In the meantime, we can prepare what else we need for this. So we need a- that's gonna be the Diamond Promise Acceptor. We got the bowl. We need an Electric Diamond. Right, so we need to go to Calculator. Yeah, you need to go through all of this. Alright, so we're just gonna prepare for the Promise of Tenacity. I kind of wanted it to make Soul Sand, to make more Soul Steel, but it's not gonna happen. Alright, so we'll just prepare everything we need. Uh, this guy should be done any second now, uh, and we should have pretty much everything we're gonna need. And then we're gonna have to do Embers, I think. It's gonna be the idea. Come on, please, you're like done. Come on, you can do it. Are you full of blood? No. Okay, that's taking five five years. Uh, let's toss this in here, that in there, that, that. Okay? So, uh, I actually want to reset up some farms before we get into Embers, because I this is running on a server, and my, we might as well be collecting all of the crops that we're storing in the shipping container, and uh, basically everything else that we can farm. Uh, for right now at least. I need more sugar cane because we need more sugar. I need cactus for the printed circuit plates uh, and Yeah, let me just figure out where I want to place those and possibly while well, the farm can go over there in that kind of sense so it's gonna be uh, kind of symmetrical and We should be good. I Reset up the normie seed farm. So this little straw golem guy is working his butt off uh, trying to harvest everything. There's a gravity block that has filters on top and underneath is where we're gonna collect the items. I am currently, I currently have a speedy hopper. It doesn't actually need to be a speedy hopper, so I think I'll just uh, be replacing that with a regular one. But basically this item importer doesn't automatically import items into the system. You need to actually say what it wants to or what it can input. So we could filter for, say, for example, uh, to uh, only import uh, beetroots, wheat, carrots, potatoes, and all that that we get from here, but I don't think we need to. We can just import everything that comes down there, so it's gonna be easier. So, uh, basically, I forgot to show, uh, that here it says import all items, and it accepts, uh, a boolean of true or false. So, if we wanna say import all items, we just need to put in a boolean of true. And here, we can program these variable cards with different uh, sort of information. So we can go here and set this to true, uh, and then put in a variable card. So we get a variable card of type boolean that says true. We go toss that in here, like so. And it's gonna import every item, and it's really fast. Uh, so we can replace that hopper with a, a regular hopper, which should be fine. We can also start importing from here. 
So basically, we just need to import from this hopper, I think, or we can put it put uh, a chest, just a regular chest, over here. Uh, let's remove this. We'll put I oh didn't I didn't want to do that. <sighs> they were still connected. Okay, that's fine. We're gonna put a hopper down here, remove that chest, and then I'm gonna set up the hoppers from the top. But we need a chesticle right here. And that guy right here and then we can run logic cable we're gonna put an importer there and we can run logic cable like so to this towards the center um, actually we're gonna just go from here I think should be best okay I'm gonna need more logic cable I reset up the hoppers again and we can add an importer here and again say import all items true uh, and that should basically put in all the wood all the saplings and everything we get from our ghetto tree farm I just ran the cable like that so it connects to there I kind of don't want to have the cable right here because I think I might uh, hit my head or something when I go down and it's gonna make it things a little bit awkward uh, so here we can put our wrench we can toss everything here away like so uh, and we don't need the buckets all right, so that's the normie seed farm. I wanna add uh, some sugarcane and possibly cactus uh, farms over here as well. So what I think I'll do, I think we ran zenstone on the edge here as well. Uh, so I'm gonna set up another area. Maybe maybe I'm, I'm gonna move this to the other side somewhere, but and I wanna set up a bit of a sugarcane farm. I don't know how big I want to go or how many uh, observers we're gonna need or anything, but I think it's gonna be just vanilla-ish. Actually, no. Uh, let's uh, fiddle around with uh, with the grit vase and see how uh, it can break blocks if we place, let's say, sugarcane underneath it so it doesn't reach. I don't know if it reaches downwards or if it's just upwards from its range, basically. We have a functional sugarcane farm. Basically, I checked the grit vase, and the way it breaks blocks is above its uh, everything that is on this level, on this level, and higher. I think up to five blocks high or even more. I don't know how high the trees go in the tree farm, but it breaks quite a bit. Uh, and basically, anything underneath it doesn't work. So if I have sugarcane, uh, sorry, it doesn't break at this level actually it breaks at the level of uh, it the tree growing So the grid base itself is not a breakable uh, lock, Block level I guess so the sugarcane as it grows like you see it gets broken and Then the grid base just poops it out at the bottom through the water in the middle and tosses it into a hopper And I don't have it connected to the shipping crates yet because I think I need to add sugarcane in here in one of the crates I think I have a crate uh, like right here that's empty uh, and we need to add you some sugarcane and I'm gonna need to add an upgrade I don't know if I have upgrade uh, let's do add barrels uh, we're gonna add you a couple of these if I have some more we can add one of those and a void overflow so I need another item frame and everything keeps getting dropped out of existence because my inventory is full uh, let's toss the fences away that can go away so we can add this guy and then we can add those like that uh, We can also toss that in here the tray doesn't need to be in here because we don't really need it uh, We don't need that much zen stone that we removed stone bricks the dirt can go away so that, that okay, uh, I also need to lock it just in case we empty it out so we can do that I love that these retain their inventory. They're just like storage drawers, but a little bit worse. But actually, they're a little bit better, but kind of equal in sense. They have some good stuff and some bad stuff. Uh, they're not compacting is a bad stuff, for example. So the way I have the sugarcane laid out here is I just went with the one block over, two blocks up technique, which basically means that you can get the maximum amount of sugarcane in an area uh, for the amount of water that you have. It is more efficient than having a line of water and then sugarcane next to it. Uh, we have, I believe, more sugarcane plants. And I ran into a problem. If I uh, grow these up too, too high, basically, the machine doesn't keep up uh, and it the sugarcane drops on the floor, but that's not gonna happen if the sugarcane just grows naturally because the machine will harvest it or the grit base will harvest it before it's grown uh, higher. Also, we can test out our system. Are you all fully grown? This is fully grown. This is 80%. That one is like fully grown. 
That one's 80%. I'll leave it for a moment uh, while we set up the cactus farm, which I want to put over here. And I think I'll go with the exact same setup. We're just going to put cactus as much as we can in an area. They are going to have to be checkerboarded. Uh, and the grit vase should collect it automatically. We don't have to worry about it popping off or anything. So that's going to be pretty much it for the cactus. So let me tear that down actually and set the cactus up here. And that should be pretty much all of the things that we need to automate right now. The cactus farm is set up in the exact same way as the sugarcane, except there's less cactus because they can't be next to one another. Uh, and I want to show you the underneath part, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I put up some chiseled rock. It says chiseled rock. I, the, these are just panes, uh, like these. Uh, and they're on the top side of the block, so basically they hold down the sand and hold back the water. Over here I have some stone brick ones. Uh, and I need to connect those with some piping and some importers into the uh, the system so we can start storing that automatically. I also need another crate uh, to add a... Uh, let's get rid of that. I also, yeah, I want to make that. I think it's called a rope. Yeah, rope. That's like a tool belt. At least from Tetra, it says. I think you can put this in here. It says rope, woolen sash. A rope and some leather scraps prove to be a great way to gain access to one of your tools, but the rope lacks the strength to support additional tools. Weaving a sash out of wool should provide better support than simply try tying a rope around your waist. And we can put potion bag, quiver, storage pouch, quadruple belt, triple belt, single belt. Uh, what are the materials that I can use for this? Also, before I get distracted, we do we have sugarcane? We have sugarcane in here. We don't have cactus. So let me go down here. There's probably some cactus in here. Uh, cactus. Let's toss that in here. Actually, we're going to need some upgrades for this as well. Uh, so let's go make those real fast. We're going to add a 256, a void, and we're going to lock it. So we can then toss this in here. I need to make some logic cable. I think I have not enough. Yeah. How much are we for crystallized mineral? We have a bit. So cable. We can make a few of these at least. I'm gonna probably need, let's say, a little over 30, maybe a 40 ish. Uh, and then we need some importers as well. So those are energy, these are the regular ones. So we can do two of those, toss everything away. I want that crate key because that goes in here. Okay, uh, we can, I'll add those in a moment. But I wanted to check out this tool belt. So let's check what the materials are for uh, tools. No, that's not what I want. Tool belts, belt slot, wool and sash. So this is just wool. It adds more integrity. So let's grab some wool. And we're gonna go rope, wool and sash. One wool, craft. Okay, that's a wool sash. Awesome. Oh, leather wrap. Okay, so you can like wrap it up to get uh, better things. I hate how shift clicking gives you everything instead of just one. Leather, nice. What is the next? Belt buckle, buckle material, okay. So now we have a belt, I think. So now, belt, belt buckle. So that's iron, not a problem. And a tier three hammer, which we have in no, 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 here. So leather wrap, belt buckle, iron, craft, awesome. Shulker inlay. Shulker shells provide exceptional as support when carrying chests and laying shells into the belt should further increase its integrity. Okay, not bad. Uh, that we can't do right now because we don't have shulkers. We could have shulkers because I have the shulker essence, so I could spawn them in. Uh, okay, so we're gonna get to that at some point. And then we have three slots. So we can put a potion bag to store potions. Quiver for arrows, which we don't need. Booster, what do you do? Boost strength. I don't know what that does. Single belt strap means that we get quick slots. Okay. We can put a storage pouch, which is a mesh pack or a pouch, small pouch, large pouch. Mesh pack, we, can, we can't do because we don't have that, uh, that yet. Plus we don't have a four hammer. So we, what if we do a pouch and then a large pouch? That's gonna be cool. So let's do storage pouch, wool, craft. And can we then do storage pouch, two leather, large pouch. Okay, 
Let's see what that does. So I have the belt. How do I trigger this? Uh, do you have any controls, Tetra? Tetra. Ah, quick access, Tetra tool belt. It's on V. Uh, that's uh, probably conflicting with something. Show conflicts. D. So toggle pixel glasses. We don't need that right now. Quick access and shape toggle. Okay, so V. Tool belt is full. How are you full? If you have a large pouch on you. Let me try and figure this out. We had two things set up before we tore down the old base. Uh, and one of them was these Cablonia flowers that produce cobblestone. And I decided to just not care about the cobblestone that gets burnt to the lava. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna get so much of it, we're not gonna have a problem or a lack of cobblestone per se. So uh, that is pretty cool. And the way I pick up uh, the cobblestone is with this gravity block in the middle with a hopper underneath. Uh, hello, missing lava. Uh, what happened to you? I think I might have replaced it. Uh, I might have broken it while placing things. Uh, let's get a cobblestone. Not an ancient one, regular one. Regular. There we go. We can toss that hair there. It's going to convert into lava. I'm going to show you how it's underneath in a moment. But I added this magical box over here, which is going to be our burst seed box. I don't know if there's any uh, anything that I can use to uh, automatically place these birth seeds from Hearthwell. There's a there was a there was a, a, a former it will slowly create a flat top. No, that's that's not the the, the what I need. Uh, there was a block that is like a block setter, consumes five energy. Yeah, that's that's the problem, and they consume energy, which I don't know how to automatically do, as I think I've said in between, uh, in the previous episode, not in between episodes, but uh, let's go check the underside of the cobble farm as well. So we have a bunch of hoppers. They're running all over the, all under the water and the lava, basically. Uh, we're not picking up here, which is where the first lava block is, because no cobblestone will go there ever. Uh, and also the same on the other side and then this hopper is the main one which has an importer uh, And that goes into the system. So on the other side here We have a gravity block underneath currently just fit uh, filtered for dirt, but we're gonna filter it for other blocks once we uh, Get them and need them. So over here. Oh, yeah, it's inactive. So we can't actually click on it uh, Hopefully I made enough cabling. So let's just get rid of all of these the water is going to cause me a tiny bit of problemos. Gotcha. Nice. And we can just come over here. And enough cabling. Wonderful. And we can just say this. And it's going to insert. Uh, I put up a speedy hopper up top. And I don't know if that... Uh, that seems like it's uh, going to keep up with everything. Hopefully. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, our burst seed thing. I'm also smelting some stuff, preparing to make uh, this guy that I checked out in between episodes, the heat furnace. This doesn't require any sort of power or any energy from the crystals. It All it does is sometimes consume water from the top. So I don't know if uh, we, since the water uh, is basically an infinite source, but if it consumes one in the corner, then that one won't get remade and we would have to replace the water somehow. And I don't know how we sh should do that. We could have ice be pushed down somehow. That would be one idea, but I don't really know. So I'm smelting a bit more stone. I smelted some zen ingots as well, but I'm smelting mostly terracotta. So let's get rid of this. So it's going to smelt us some more bricks because those are required to make the heat blocks to make the, uh, the heat furnace. And one thing I want to do is get some of these. Uh, some of you. Give me like, I don't know, eight, six, six is fine. Wonderful. Cause this is gonna be make, make my life and not smelting cobblestone uh, much easier. Okay, do you do your thing, get me some stone. Uh, I think I'm gonna end the episode off here. We're gonna come back next time and hopefully we can set up the heat furnace and see how that works and how much water it consumes. And if it's just a little bit that it consumes every so often, I can replace it manually. Or you can probably suggest uh, 
some sort of way to automatically replenish the water up top. Uh, I don't know if there's anything in this mod pack that can do it. Probably Integrated Dynamics has like placers, I think. Uh, add Integrated. It has like a world item exporters. Place items into the world. Yeah, we could probably store water inside of it and then place, <clears throat> yeah, fluid exporter. Place fluids into the world. We can just put those up top and then we can export water. And we can put a world fluid importer somewhere to collect water and store it in a tank and then put that in the thing. And that could be could be done. Yeah, could be, could be, could be done. Okay, so as I said, thank you so much for watching. I'm hoping you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. Also, consider subscribing to see new videos. You can support me on Patreon if you want to play with me in here on the server. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a great one. Bye-bye.